November 12th, and we are at. Where are we at? Read it. Where are we at? Law Enforcement Training Academy Graduation. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. I mean, which school? Which one? Yeah. What is this one? You know your name. What are y'all doing? Mm -hmm. This is. Yeah. And what's your name? Carter, Carter. <laughs> Carter, Carter. Uh, it's not Carter, Carter. Uh, 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 Carter, Carter. Uh, 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 Hey. All uniform law enforcement. Present. Oh. So God. 
side and the perspective of the class, and that's a great honor to be selected as the spokesman for the class. And this year, that honor goes to Officer Stephen Williford from the Arkansas Highway Police. I'll ask you to come down and present to us. Before I get started, I'm going to ask Officer Hunter Taylor to come up for the class prayer. Everybody, please bow their heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today in celebration. Not just celebration of completion, but a celebration of taking the first step since our young careers. Lord, I ask you to be with every officer as we take the streets and attempt to bring peace to our communities. Lord, blanket these officers and their families with protection as we head to take a very prominent role in our communities. <coughs> Lord, look over these officers and their families as they drive home and throughout their careers, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephen Wilford. I am the co-class leader for Black River Technical College Law Enforcement Training Academy Basic Class 21B. When I found out I was going to be doing uh, the speech today, Instructor Bassingham told me he had some good jokes to use as an icebreaker for the crowd. Being that I don't have a lot of experience speaking in front of crowds, I decided to take him up on his offer. After hearing his selection of material, I decided that he should probably stick to teaching law enforcement classes. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> On behalf of my brothers and sisters sitting before me, I would like to thank everyone for attending this graduation. There's a long list of people I would like to thank, but I will start off with President Dr. Amos Berger. Thank you for allowing us to have an in-person graduation. It's been a weird couple of years, and I understand that you have a responsibility to safety. I do know that the class of 21B and our loved ones appreciate the opportunity to gather together and celebrate the achievements of the day. Thank you. Thank you to the different agencies represented today. I'm unaware of a single agency that isn't struggling with manpower. However, you found it necessary to support your new officers and show them that their achievements are an achievement for the agency as a whole. I know there are probably some that were unable to break free and be here today, and that is completely understandable. But it speaks volumes to those of you that found a way to be, uh, to be here in today's tough environment. Thank you to the director, instructors, and support staff here at Black River. Over the last 13 weeks, we as a class have grown to appreciate each of you for your vast knowledge and expertise on each subject you've taught. Instructor Dyer, it took longer for us to appreciate some than others. <laughs> From Instructor Hankins' class on the use of force to Instructor Plaster's search and seizure class, to the class on EVOC that Instructor Bowles gave and the block of instruction on tactical medicine that Instructor Mosier offered, each was a building block for the lesson that came after it. Although there were some late nights and some homework here and there, everything you required of us took us one step closer to being effective law enforcement officers for our communities. I want to thank the families and support groups that stand silently behind the badge. It is with your support that we have been able to show up week
week after week for the last three months to train and learn the basics of law enforcement. It is your support that allows us to work the shifts that, are, that require us to miss the baseball games, the dance recitals, the birthday parties, and the list goes on and on. You are often overlooked by the public, but you share every bit as much of the burden of this career, this calling. Without you in the shadows, there would be nobody to tend to the day-to-day -day tasks while your officers are out there putting their lives on the line for someone else. For that, you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank the officers of 21B. At a time where, quite frankly, the deck seems stacked against you, you decided to take the leap and begin this career. While I know a lot of us, uh, while I know a lot of negative feelings are fabricated by the mainstream media, there is no denying that law enforcement isn't the most beloved profession of today. Each of you had your own reasons for making this decision. I know we all stood up on day one and told each other why we wanted to do this job. To be honest, I don't really remember much about what each person said on day one. What I have learned since then has stuck with me though. I know there are a few of you that chose the profession because on some level you feel responsible to give back what your families took for, from society. Some wanted to show your babies that there are other options out there and they can be anything they want to be. You wanted to show them that society doesn't get to decide who they are. There are some that just were tired of the everyday life and decided to mix it up. Whatever your reason, I believe that there is a servant's heart in each and every one of you. Each one of you probably have your own interpretation of what law enforcement is. As a young boy, I wanted to be a police officer. At that point in my life, I didn't even know what that meant. As my life took different paths, I began to focus on other things. But one thing stuck with me, and that was the desire to serve others. I ended up in fire and EMS for a little while. I love responding to the calls for service, whether it be medicals and trauma, or dealing with the NBCs and structure fires. I finally decided to continue with my goal of law enforcement, and that's how I ended up standing before you today. Service to others has driven me for some time, and I believe that service to others is the basics of law enforcement as a whole. There is a full spectrum of law enforcement here today. We have city officers, county deputies, park rangers, and me with the highway police. We have different but equally important duties. I may not respond to domestic violence calls every night, and you probably won't be inspecting commercial vehicles anytime soon. I think there are only two of us that will be making people put out their campfires. <laughs> there, there, there will be times when it's necessary to write a citation or take someone to jail. There may be times where people don't want to comply, and we have to make them. The point is this, even in the times where we must deal with unpleasant situations, remember the why. What is the big picture reason that we do what we do? There will, be a, there will be a time where there will be a good man just trying to make a living for his family. And I have, to, I have to place him out of service. He will be losing money as he sits, and he may have to pay a mechanic to fix whatever's wrong with the vehicle. To him, it's not going to be the best day of his life. However, I'm not out there to punish this man. I'm, I put him out of service so he doesn't blow a tire and lose control while driving next to your family on their way to town. If I remember the reason why I do what I do, then I can treat him with respect and still do what must be done for the people I serve. The same goes for that burglary call at the business at 2 a.m. You're there to serve the business owner and the consumer that pays a lower cost at the counter because you stopped the loss of product. So my point is, remember the why you do what you do. <clears throat> I remember on my way up here on that first Sunday morning, I was driving and praying for a good roommate, and then I got to the hotel and I met Edge. So I guess the connection between the good Lord and myself wasn't real clear that day. <laughs> Actually, he turned, out, uh, he turned out okay, and I thought, you know what, this, this ain't going to be too bad. And then the sun set, and mosquitoes like I'd never seen before came from everywhere. I'm talking they were wearing plate carriers and night vision. It was wild. We made it to week three and started defensive tactics. We were running drills in the gym one day and this guy with this perfect cone 
And uh, I don't really know what all happened down there on that end of the gym, but all I start hearing is on your face. And uh, we didn't know who this guy was, so we just kind of stared at him with a, who's this guy, look on our face. Uh, I think he took it as a sign of disrespect. And other than Evok, I think that's the only time Instructor Bolt's hair started to move. <laughs> I've seen things I would have never guessed that I would, I would see. Like a man Shrek size, running in full on sprint around the fire tower, chasing down and taking a baton from Stefan. <clears throat> I thought I was gonna get fired from the class leader position around week seven. Um, when I had the fabulous idea that we should shave our heads for the class picture. <laughs> Instructor Bassam called me to the office that next morning, and I was sitting there with my bald head in his office. I know he wanted to say something, but he refrained. He never did. I stand by the statement, it's one of the most fun nights we had at the hotel. I would, however, like to apologize to the families, as I was unaware that we would be able to buy said pictures. So I'm sorry for that. There was a point <clears throat> when we had to talk Instructor Bassam off the ledge. Uh, we were discussing our military experiences, and he said something about going through basic training in an undisclosed year. Just so happened to be the year that I was born, uh, <laughs> which of course I had to bring to his attention. Uh, as you can imagine, he was less than thrilled with that particular piece of information. In hindsight, the rifle range probably wasn't the best location for that conversation. Uh, the number of nicknames given during this academy was kind of surprising. Uh, we got Shrek, Yogi, Parks and Rec, Peepaw, Out of Shape Tom Brady, uh, Selfie King, and a host of others I won't name because the backstory is too incriminating. This, this academy has been a very informative experience though. We have all done things we've never done before. Uh, for me, in particular, that was Everything from getting OC, certified on OC spray, uh, which was an experience since I let I came into peer pressure from Harrison to get sprayed with Top Cop, uh, all the way to singing my ABCs while in the front leaning rest position. That was a new one. There were great times like singing Backstreet Boys on the firearms range, and then not so great times that immediately followed. <laughs> We've been influenced by each other as well as the instructors. I've heard from other academies, and not to degrade, but I do believe we have the best education available in the state. As I said before, it is no secret that this profession is getting progressively more difficult to be in. It's hard to deal with people that are taught to have no respect for law and order. We've done the PT, we've had the lecture, we've done the practicals. Now it's time to put it all together. Instructor Dyer has been reminding us since week one that success is not guaranteed with this famous phrase, if you make it that far. Well, 21B, we made it that far. <laughs> but let's keep that mindset every time we go 10A, defy the opposition and make it to the goal. I know not everyone has been my biggest fan during this academy, and that's okay. Personalities differ, but know this, if you guys need Anything for me, just reach out and I'll do what I can. One thing we can all have in common is pity for class 22A. There is no way they're gonna live up to the standard that we set. Mostly D squad, but I guess since it's our last day, we'll let the whole class join in. <laughs> now I was gonna say, I was not gonna mess Pocahontas America. Director Schultz proofread my speech, and after a solid lesson in Pocahontas history, I will say, there is more to this town than I thought. Um, we got our hair cut at the oldest operating barber shop yesterday. Um, I got lessons on rotating, uh, rotating railroad bridges. It was all kinds of cool information. However, comma, based on my personal experience, I am not gonna miss Pocahontas, Arkansas. <laughs> My last statement to you as your class leader is this. 21B, get your mind right. Rent is due every single day. So get out there, get your chili hot, and get some.
Some of these guys were very successful in ladies, and we uh, award special honors for certain achievements. While in the academy, they receive a variety of training. They also have the highest achievement in four specific areas are acknowledged and awarded. These areas are emergency driving, firearms, physical training, academics, and then there's an overall award. Instructor Ashley Bowles will now come forward and present the first award. <laughs> Um, as uh, Director Schultz said, I am presenting the Mercy Vehicle Operations Award. Driving is an important part of an officer's skill set. These officers in recent weeks have learned new, numerous things. Progressive acceleration, progressive braking, cornering, skid control, evasive steering, and numerous other Mercy driving techniques. At the end of their training, they, they completed a time qualification course that qualification for stand and then it's called. In third place, Deputy Richard Potter of the Craighead County Sheriff's Office. In second place, Officer Carlos Young II of the Soviet Union. If you will join me on stage, the leader class 21B top works to be the operator. Also, Travis Keel. It is my honor to present the uh, Firearms Achievement Award for Lita Basic Police Training Class 2021B. Each semester, our basic students are required to successfully complete a demanding and progressive firearms training program during the weekend of the Basic uh, Police Academy course. On qualification day, our students are required to successfully complete two consecutive qualifying courses of fire with each course totaling 50 possible points. You understand and recognize when I call their names. In third place, with an outstanding score of 96.2%, Calvin Ramirez of the Mountain View Police Department. In second place, with a score of 96.6%, Michael Dunn of the Independence County Sheriff's Department. And joining me on stage in first place, with a score of 98.6%, Matthew Mohan of the Hot Springs Police Department. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks again, uh, B Squad, on the leadership. Uh, also, 21B, thanks for your very generous donation to Stop the Bleeding Foundation. Just find out about this morning, so I appreciate you giving back. Uh, knowledge is at the core of an officer's ability to do their job. Officers must continue to study even after they leave the academy uh, to keep up with new laws, changes in policies, and procedures, and so forth. Each week, trainees are tested on material they receive in classroom or practical exercises. A minimum score of 70% is required to continue in the academy. Some blocks of instruction require higher percentage scores, such as field sobriety testing. Academics. Uh, I want to give you some numbers real quick because this is about as close as I can remember. Uh, the difference between first and third place is 0.6541%. So way to the right of the decimal. The difference between first and second is 0.064%. So very tight race. As I call your name, uh, like before, please stand and be recognized in third place with an average of 98.0909%. Officer Lily Commons, Mobile Rock Police Department. In second place, with an average of 98.61%, 681%, Superintendent Michael Havens, Jr., Arkansas Department of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism. And joining me on stage in first place, with an average of 98.745%, Officer Calvin Ramirez, Mountain View Police Department. All right, we move a little there, Frank. Uh, I too would like to thank Mr. Uh, Director Schultz for the opportunity to have this job and to be, uh, be able to influence uh, police officers across Northeast Arkansas. So, I appreciate it. Uh, so, the PT Award, a police officer is not physically fit, 
It's not only a risk to themselves, but also to their coworkers. There are no excuses. The overall PT award is based on the lead games, which includes the Cooper Protocol, which consists of as many repetitions as possible in one minute of push-ups and sit-ups respectively, and a one and a half mile run as fast as possible. If you will, please stand when I call your name. In third place, Officer Stephen Williford with the Arkansas Highway Police. In second place, Officer Christian Ramirez with the Hospital Police Department. If you'll please join me on stage in first place, Officer Cameron Harrison with the Jonesboro Police Department. I need the recipe. She's got a cute one. Are 
I still like the white chocolate yep. chip better. It's a winner here. Which one? Yeah. Yeah. So far. Yeah, I like the, the white chocolate chip. I'm kind of scared to eat the heat ball one. I'm scared to eat the heat ball one. 